love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want. Hi, welcome to another episode of Flippin' Rich. And today we really want to take a deep dive into just what it takes to secure a loan for a fix and flip property, kind of what all goes into it. So, you know, first off, Peter, um, there's a lot of terms that, that go around. Like I hear if I'm wanting to do a, a buy, fix and sell a house, right? I hear private money. I hear the word hard money. I hear loan from the bank. What are the, what does that mean? Well, first of all, all of them are legitimate ways to get money, but some of them in this world are a little bit more legitimate, meaning mm -hmm. ease of use. You know, one of the things I've learned in real estate, especially in the investing niche, ease of use matters. Okay. Ease of use matters. Bank financing, uh, conventional financing, you know, institutional money. Mm -hmm. It is the cheapest money, but it is by far the hardest money to get when it comes to our types of business of fix and flips. Bottom line, none of those institutions, none of the banks, they don't want to be in this game. Gotcha. They want to lend on something that's nice and pretty. If God forbid they have to say take it so back. So they want the long term gain. They want the, well, they want the long term gain, and they also look at it from a you know a bank always looks at it from a worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. well, no banker wants to get something back to realize it's not a sellable product. Gotcha. You know they don't want to get in the business mm -hmm. of fixed their upper. So although it's the cheapest money, bank financing is is by far the toughest money. I'll tell you really. If you're a beginner investor, stay away. Like cross that off. That's not something you should start out with. Mm -hmm. For the other reason, Julie, you don't want to start out with it is that it's 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 um, it's the hardest to underwrite. Gotcha. You know, they're not just looking at the deal, and you'll see how deals really matter. Uh, they're really looking at the borrower. And so, if you have new tied into everything, like you're a newbie, you're inexperienced, that I could tell you that this is not an area to to start out with. Um, the second one is what we call private money. Okay. And the best way I can describe private money, it's, it's usually friends and family. Mm -hmm. It's usually friends, family, people that tend to know you. Friends and family, at least that's where it starts, okay. right? It starts at the friends and family for a couple reasons. One, it's the easiest to secure. Yeah. Well, for some, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. for some people. Some people have family got no money. <laughs> some people don't have it, and some people want to have nothing to do with friends and family. Mm -hmm. But it tends to be the easiest money to 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 uh, secure. Um, the cool thing about it is that this is where it starts, but it can grow like rapid fire. Mm -hmm. You know, once you build a reputation, once you've made some payments back to people, once you've actually paid off. Um, that's when you start going outside the friends and family circle, but you still stay at mm -hmm. the people, at the people side. But you of have it. experience to you show these other people. Experience, yeah. you 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 validate it yourself, and and the cool thing, I'll tell you, the cool thing about private money is this is really the only type of money where you more or less dictate the terms, right? Gotcha. So when I'm raising private capital, I, I can't remember the last time, I'm sure it's happened, but I can't remember the last time somebody called me and said how much I have to pay them. It's always like they hear about you, they hear about what you're doing, they know they can get a return, mm -hmm. and, and you pretty much tell them. Right, and a lot of times, you know, if you have mm -hmm. that reputation and you have paid people back, you pretty much dictate the terms. Yeah, you dictate the terms of how much interest, how much points, how much closing cost. You, you know, you're going to be paying. How long the money is going to stay there? Are there mm -hmm. renewal fees? Are there non-renewal fees? And all this. Um, having said this, having said this, if uh, it's not like institutional capital, where I'd say mm -hmm. stay away from it if you're a beginner. Not quite that, but this is probably the second toughest uh, area to play in. Well, yeah, because if let's say you run, but you're running behind on the job, and you your cousin, you borrow the yeah. money for your cousin. He's calling you every day. Where's my money? Where's yeah. my money? Where's my money? I mean, emotionally, that could be tough. It's tough, and let's face it: if you don't have that cousin, then you truly are going into this business with uh, without a, necessarily a reputation. And now you're trying to raise private capital in a really truly private way, meaning from people mm -hmm. that you don't know. And so, unless you have some easy way to grab some money, like um, you know, again, friends, family, people that trust you, people that love you, people that'll just based upon your word will give you money. Again, you dictate the terms. You're in charge. Ease of use is also because mm -hmm. uh, 
let's face it, they're not going to ask to underwrite you, mm -hmm. right? I mean, your friends are probably not going to be saying, okay, well, here's a form, such and such, fill it out. Mm -hmm. So ease of use, all of those are positives. Um, but the reality is, unless you have a reputation behind you, it is fairly difficult money to get. Mm -hmm. And the third money, which is the money that I started from day one, I still use this two decades in the business. I interchange it. I, you know, I use plenty of institutional money. I use private money, but hard money. Hard money is the, the, the in, uh, you know what, I still to this day, Julie, it's funny, I don't know the, why they call it hard money. Because it's actually not hard money. It's it is not, not even that hard to get, is it's it? It's not that hard to get. And really, but the whole concept of hard money, mm -hmm. uh, I always tell people it was designed for our types of business. For the fix and flip, short-term wholesale holds, whatever it is, that type of lending was literally designed for us. So I always tell people it's the best of all the worlds, right? Mm -hmm. Number one, you already mentioned it, ease of use, right? Uh, although a hard money lender, especially an organized one, you know, who does it from, a, let's say, a company who maybe has employees, mm -hmm. they are going to underwrite, right? But I could tell you that underwriting is like at the very, very low levels, nowhere mm -hmm. compared to the institutional underwriting. Number two, since it is designed for our fix and flips in our industry, they want to give it to us. You know, you go to an institution, they don't want to give it to you. You try to raise private capital and you're trying to convince somebody that doesn't know you, you're barking up a, 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 a tall hill here. Mm -hmm. But this hard money, it's designed for industry, so they actually want to make it possible. Here's the other thing. In those other, the, the private capital, the institutional capital, um, it's not really designed for newbies. We already mm -hmm. discussed why. They don't, they, none, none, of those in the, none of those sectors want to see newbies. They want to see experience like sales. Would you say, like as a newbie in this business, would you say you got to pay to play? Oh, yeah. You absolutely got to pay to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. let's talk about that a little bit. Like the different, like... So let's say I'm brand new, right? Right, and I found this great deal. Let's not worry about the rest of it. Let's just say it's a great deal all the way through. I know what the rehab is. I know what the purchase price is. I know what the sales price is. Okay. And I am brand new. What would I need to secure a loan with a hard money lender? Well, first of all, let me just hit on all of them really quickly because it's pretty easy. Institutional world, you're going to need somewhere between 10 and 20%. Private world, it could be all the way to zero because you're working with regular mm -hmm. people who don't even, you know, that's not the world they're in. At the hard money end, probably about, if you're brand new, you're going to be around that 20 to 25 percent if you're brand mm -hmm. new because experience, although they're looking to give you money and they will give you that money, even if you're brand new, they want you, like Julie said, pay to play. I call it skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now as you move up the food chain, you know, I've been at this thing thousands of deals, a couple decades into this business. You know, I now borrow at the hard money level, right? Uh, I still borrow there, um, but, but I bring somewhere between zero to 10%. Again, that's 100% based upon experience, nothing else short of experience. Um, and th there's, some, there's some fees you're gonna have to be paying, sometimes an underwriting fee, a fee, an appraisal fee. But, but any way you slice it, unless you get to kind of the levels I've been able to achieve a couple of decades in a business, you're going to have to pay to play. So to on an average play. for a new person, they talk about points. Yep. Like they'll say, okay, you've got this many points to pay or whatever. Mm -hmm. yep. A lot of people don't understand what points mm. are. Yeah. Right? Well, or what is an average points you might pay on, yep. a hard money, on a hard money loan in the first place. Yep. Well, the bottom line is it's a point, it's just a cost. It's another okay. cost. You know, there's interest and there's points. Those are the two main costs associated with this type of a lending. Interest is exactly what it sounds like. What is the interest rate you're going to pay in the loan? Mm -hmm. Points, usually you, you're dealing with small numbers here, but they could be very expensive numbers. Oh, yeah. Points usually range anywhere from one point, if you're seasoned and experienced, sometimes even below that, um, upwards of two to three points. And a I've seen them five or six. And they can go all the way up there. Yeah. A point is just basically 1% uh, uh, of a deal. Every point equals 1% of the deal. So let's, Of the purchase price and the rehab? Of whatever you're borrowing. Okay, gotcha. Of the borrowing amount. If you're borrowing everything, then yes. So let's say you're borrowing $100,000 with two points. Okay. That means before you pay any interest, before you do anything, before you walk out of the closing table, you're going to be two grand down. Out, okay. of, out of your profits. Out of your profit. That's right. That's exactly right. So every point represents one interest rate of the dollar amount. One, I'm sorry, one percent of the dollar amount that you're borrowing. So if you're borrowing two hundred thousand dollars and you're paying one point on it, you're paying two thousand dollars. 
And by the way, a lot of times um, at the hard money end, that's where they make all their money. They mm -hmm. make their money on the points because the goal of hard money is to flip it, basically put mm -hmm. it out, get it back as quickly as possible, uh, get it back mm -hmm. as quickly as possible, right? So on the interest side, you know, even if you're charging 10, 12% interest, if you're getting that money back within a couple months, eh, you're not making a killing in the interest. Mm -hmm. But on the points, you're making it at the closing table. So you put the money out, get it back two or three times a year, two or three points at a time, all right, you're looking just just on literally just showing with the closing table as a lender, you could be making you know eight nine percent interest. Literally just showing up the closing table. Mm -hmm. So points is really where the money is made, and points is really your cost to play. <clears throat> it's actually cheaper on you to take less draws during the during the transaction. So let's say, again, we'll go back to that $50,000 rehab. Let's say mm -hmm. you've only got $10,000 on top of the 20%. Mm -hmm. So you got your $10,000 out. Now it's time for another draw. Mm -hmm. Do they charge you to come out there to give you a draw? Yeah, yeah. They charge you two ways, time and money. Time and money. And uh, so, yeah, it's going to cost you. If you're going to have a bunch of draws, you're going you're gonna to incur fees into the thousands. What's crazy about this whole thing that was so hard for me to understand. This thing is set up for new people, for the banks to make more money than you. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you went and found the deal. Mm -hmm. You're doing the work. You're getting it sold. And sometimes the mm -hmm. lenders make more money than you. And why is that? We just told you. It's points, it's interest. Interest really isn't as important as everybody thinks, even though everybody thinks that's the most important thing, mm -hmm. right? No. But it's, it's how much money do you got? How many draws are you taking? You can't afford to be doing three, four, five draws in the middle of a job. You want to get as much done as possible, collect mm -hmm. a big draw mm -hmm. so that you're not paying all those fees. Yep. Right? Yep. That's exactly right. You know, you said something interesting. I don't want to, I want to make sure that our listeners don't overlook this. Yeah. It is very, oh, and by the way, I lived this, what I'm about to tell you. Like, I literally mm -hmm. lived this, where my lenders, my hard money lenders were making more money than yeah, I Yeah, they were like, Peter! Oh, no, it's, 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 they know how to structure these deals. <clears throat> He's sitting in an office like this, you know, yep. kind of sipping his coffee and waiting for you to make some whopping payments. Yeah, while you're sitting over here stressed out that yep. the windows are one week behind, yep. that this, and two by fours went up. Yep. I mean, that, that, that's just crazy. You know, we're not telling you all of this to stop you from wanting to go and flip houses, mm -mm. but you need to know before you get into yep. it. And sometimes it's not best to learn the business from the lender. You've got to understand where the lender's coming from. Mm -hmm. They're in a business to make money. They are not going to set themselves up in a way that they don't make money. Somebody like Peter that's done thousands of deals, they're okay to take less money. Right? Like you're not pulling draws, you're not doing these things right. because it costs money. But anything that we're talking about, it really boils down that you do, you got to pay to play. Mm -hmm. Right? You got to start somewhere. <laughs> That's why it's so important to follow the ground rules that we've laid out for you. Right? These tight deals, you may lose all your profits in a tight deal just off of, of the money side, yeah. couldn't you? Oh, very, very easily. And the other thing that's very important that people understand, especially if you're newer and you're watching this, don't get into big rehab jobs. Don't. I mean, they will absolutely, and it's, and it's, it's, it's the way the money works on reimbursements, on holding costs when you go over and all this. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the, 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 the way, the scale of who makes more will tremendously get uh, way towards your lender side if you get in over your head on the rehab side. Okay, so just kind of a sideline tip, but I know we're talking about money. I know, Julie, you said, and I agree with you, that, that you know the interest is not the important thing, but when you get into these kind of interest rates, 10, 12%. Over it, eight months. Or yeah. you sit in the deal upwards of a year, figure it out. It's huge. It's more than just pay to play. Well, I hope you guys learned a little bit today about private money, about um, hard money lending. Yeah about um, institutional. In, institutional funds. Um, so sign off, Peter. So what's your biggest advice um, to someone when going to purchase more their first or, or first couple flips? Well, I'll tell you, when it comes to money, a lot of people just overlook thinking about it as a cost. You know, they'll factor the cost mm -hmm. of the rehab. 
you know, they'll factor the cost of, you know, here's my acquisition cost. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll factor everything else, and they just kind of sort of ballpark the number, a number for the cost of money. Mm -hmm. It is an actual cost. It is a hard cost, and it is an expensive cost. Mm -hmm. So my best advice, if you're getting into a deal, especially if you're in the newer side, get very intimate at figuring out the cost of what it really costs to do a deal because that cost could literally flip a deal from being profitable to no longer being profitable. It happened to me. You gotta know your numbers and you gotta know the numbers of the money game. Yes, and thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Flip, Flip and Rich. See you next time.